A new movie is about to make a splash at the box office. It's called The Perfect Wave, but it's much more than a surfing movie. This film tells the real story of Ian McCormick's near-death experience. We want you to have a sneak peek. They say the best surfer in the world is having the most fun. It's not about competition. It's simply about the moment. Mom, if I don't do this now, I never will. Leaving home, my mom had a premonition something might happen. And me, well, I just want to get out there and discover freedom. Are you going to tell me about this perfect way? It's almost as if time stands still. I may never leave this beautiful island, at least not in this body. Ian McCormick is with us, and we welcome you back to the 700 Club. Thanks, Terry. Fascinating to hear this today from your own mouth. Talk about what 1982, you were chasing the perfect wave, you were sort of traveling around the world. Tell us what was going on in your life. Um, I just love surfing, I love traveling, but I think deeper inside I was looking for the meaning and truth mm -hmm. to life. Yeah. I really wanted to know, is what is life all about? Yeah. So here you are, you're in, wh where, where, where were you in? Mor Mauritius, Mauritius, Indian Ocean, just off Madagascar. And you're, you're surfing, you're out in the water, and you encounter five box lethal jellyfish. box jellyfish. Did you know at the time that you were being stung by so many, and, and what went through your mind? Um, there were many in the water, but the, when I first went in, I couldn't see them because they're nearly transparent. The Creoles speak French, so they call uh -huh. them invisible, or invisible one. Ah. And I was a lifeguard and a diver. I'd heard about them in Australia, but in those years, it was yet to read encyclopedias. There was no internet. And so you'd not ever encountered anything I'd never like encountered that before. Them. And wow. I was hit by five of them. Did you know right away what was happening to you? Oh, excruciating pain. It felt like thousands of volts of electricity. Good girl. And so I immediately showed the divers what had happened. My arm was blistered, double its normal size, and they said in French, on visab, tac, Stephanie, one of them will kill me. Mm. And they go in French, allez, allez, vite, vite, cut from a hospital. And they told me immediately to get to the hospital. But, here, but you're not near a hospital. Oh, no, I mean, me here you it. are, out on the beach. What did you do? Well, the young boy took me to shore, and they told me to urinate on my arm. Um, the poison and neurotoxin, I actually collapsed when I hit the beach. The boy dragged me out of the boat, and then he spoke in French about mon frère sur la plage, wanted to save his brothers. And I said, no, ambulance, gendarme. But he took off and left me, frightened that his brothers would be killed by them also. Oh, wow. But they had full wetsuits, so they were protected. So at this point, you are on your own. I mean, there's no one that you're left on the beach. What did you do? Just gather enough strength to... Um, normally they kill, if I'm hit in the throat, three to four minutes. On the extremities, 10, 15 minutes. So I'm right on the edge of death. And I hear this audible voice speak to me and said, son, if you close your eyes, you will never awake again. And I had no idea that that was God. Mm. I found out later that my sheep hear my voice. Yeah. And even while we're lost, God loved us even while we're sinners and died for yes. us. So I'm here, I'm a black sheep. I don't know the Lord, I'm an atheist. But um, thank God back in New Zealand, I've got a mother on her knees praying. Wow. God has spoken to her and said, your elder son Ian is nearly dead. And so my mother's praying and God's really speaking to me. So you just literally drag yourself up yeah. to a road. Tell us what happened then. Um, it's a long story, but eventually they get me into an ambulance and I start going into the death rattles. Um, I'm shaking, I'm, uh, I'm dehydrated, um, lying in the ambulance, my life starts flashing before me. And I thought, oh gosh, this happens before you die. And next minute I see my mum on her knees praying. Mm. <laughs> and mm. I'm shaken. Yeah. My mum's saying what she told me when I was confirmed as a 14-year-old boy when I walked away from church. She said, Ian, no matter how far from God you may be, yeah. no matter what you've done wrong, yeah. if you call to God from your heart, mm -hmm. God will hear you, you and know, God will forgive you. When the waves are all going right and when everything mm. in life is moving your way, yeah. it, it's so easy to just do your own thing. And in a moment... Yeah. It can change. Right. So you get to the hospital, but I mean, Ian, time's run out. 
I mean, what happens? Well, thank God on that ambulance, I prayed. I said, God, if you're real, help me to pray. And the Lord's prayer appeared. Wow. And forgive us our sins. I said, Lord, I have so many sins. I don't know how you can forgive me. Please, if you can, the words disappeared. And then forgive those who have sinned against you. And I said, well, that's easy. I'm not a revengeful man by nature. And then two men's faces appeared in front of me. And God said, will you forgive them? And I thought, yeah, yeah, you had to. But I said, God, I will, if you can forgive me. I didn't realize if we don't forgive others, God yeah. will not forgive us our sins. So I forgave them. Then thy will be done, which is surrendering my life to the Lordship of Christ. And as I prayed, an incredible peace entered me, which hasn't left me in 33 years. So thank God he's the Prince of yeah. Peace. And but those who call from his heart will be saved. I can see you're still touched by the truth of what God revealed to you in those moments. Yeah, well, eternal life is from a, a God who has yeah. eternal love. You were dead for 15 minutes. What happened to you during that time? Well, in the hospital, they lost me. I flatlined. And um, as I came out of my body, I was translated into complete darkness. Wow. I thought, what happened? Uh, did they turn the lights out? So I groped around the darkness, couldn't find anything, no wall, no lights. So I lifted my hand towards my face, thought if surely you know, I can touch my face. My hand went straight through my face. My body couldn't find it. Mm. I found out later, of course, when a man dies, a spirit leaves his body. And um, I'm standing there outside of it. And I'm hearing incredible, sensing incredible evil and hearing voices saying, shut up. You deserve to be here. You're in hell. I'm like, this can't be hell. It's supposed to be a party place, you know. Mm. And, and then, of course, I realized that, you know, the fruit of the flesh, Galatians says, is the morality, drunkenness and adultery. And so these are the desires of a man's heart. But when you're out of your body and you can't fulfill them, this is the parable, or this is the, not the parable, this is the, um, yeah, metaphor, mm -hmm. where the worm will not devour the flesh. But thank God for Psalm 23, the Lord's my shepherd. Yeah. I shall not want, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And greater is he within me. As I'm standing there, realizing evil can't touch me, light pierces through the darkness. I'm drawn up into this tunnel of light. I feel waves of comfort and peace and joy. I turn my head to the right and see my body is actually outside of its physical form, but it is my hands like a, a being of light. So says we should be transformed. Yeah. Uh, mortality will take an immortality. First the natural, then the heavenly. And yeah. death, where is your sting? It's sin, but thank God I've been forgiven of it. Mm -hmm. And flesh and blood will not inherit the kingdom of God. And so I'm, I'm seeing my body outside of its physical form, but it, it is my body. Wow. I come out of this light, a uh, tunnel of light, into uh, a kingdom of radiance. This light is so incredible. And what I now know, it's the glory of God shining around Christ and waves of love. <laughs> wave after wave after wave of love. What did you think? What went through your mind at that time? Thought, what on see? earth am I doing here? How could God love me? And then he said, Ian, God is light. And in him there is no darkness at all. 1 John 1, 5. And he showed me that all my sins had been forgiven while I was in that ambulance. Wow. That when I prayed the Lord's Prayer, he didn't just wash away some, but his blood had washed away all my sins. And I am weeping like, I can't believe. I walk into the radiance and here's Jesus with dazzling white robes, arms outstretched. But when you look to his face, it's like looking to eternity within eternity. It's like the cosmos, galaxy, star systems would come out of his face. His hair was shoulder length and pure white. So I'm standing here looking at what John saw, uh, the Alpha and the Omega, you know, Yeshua, Hamashiach, the, the light of the world. And when I read Revelations, I went, his face shines like the sun in full strength. His head and his hair are white like wool, like snow. He said, don't be afraid. I was what? Dead. I'd seen Jesus, the Son of Man, or Jesus, the crucified Christ but not Jesus the glorified, yeah. risen, eternal, um, mm. light of the world. It was like you could see that if he spoke, galaxies would come into existence. Out of his face came light so bright that it touched me. I felt instant purity, mm. childlike innocence. So the pure in heart will see God. And then holiness. Thank God he's coming back for a holy, pure bride. I can't imagine having experienced that and, and, and coming back. But it was the picture of your mother praying for yeah. you that brought you back. Dead yeah, right. I, Jesus stepped aside and showed me a new earth and heaven. He said, this is the river of life and, and he's made all things new, which is Revelations 21. One. And, I, and I thought, 
And then he stepped in front of me and said, do you wish to remain here, which I knew I had access into eternity, mm -hmm. and I knew I was home, or do you want to go back? And I said, well, no one loves me. I love no one. I have no return for. I looked back and saw my mum. Mm. That went straight into my heart. Wow. I went, there's one person. If I stepped through, how would she know? Would she have any idea her son gave saved. his life to Jesus yeah. in that ambulance? She would have no one who could tell her that he had changed his life or prayed. Or... Yeah. And, and I said, I must go back. He said, Ian, if you return, you must see things in a new light from a heavenly perspective. I looked back again and then... Uh, like a Canadian geese, you know how they fly in a V yes. formation? Hundreds of thousands of people. Wow. Sea of humanity. You could make out their faces. I said, who are they? He said, Ian, I want you to go back and tell them also. Most will not step foot inside a church any longer to hear my name. I said, but God, I don't know them. I don't love them. He said, Ian, I love them. Hmm. I just want all of them to come to know me. Wow. wow. And he, I said, how do I go back down the tunnel, back into darkness and back in my body? He said, Ian, tilt your head open your eye and see. As I tilted my head, I was instantly back in the hospital, on a slab in a morgue with a doctor and nurses freaking out. I'd just come back from the dead, being dead 15 to 20 minutes. Wow, wow. Uh, this is just the tip of the iceberg. You're going to have to see the movie to get the rest of the story. It's unbelievable. The movie about Ian's life is called The Perfect Wave. It opens in theaters this Friday, July the 11th. We also have an extended interview with Ian McCormick. It's on our website. To watch that, just go to CBN.com. What an amazing story. Thank you so much for sharing enough of it with us. We want to go mm. see now what the movie has I to share with us. I think it's the power of prayer and the power of eternal love. Yes. That love that's so great that it forgive the most vilest of sinner, mm -hmm. that we're saved through grace by the blood of Christ. Amen.